Before I do this last demonstration, let me show you a small segment about what a teacher did with his class in sediments. After talking to Nelson, I wanted to share my newfound knowledge with my friend Chuck Callie from Chapel Glen Elementary. When I arrived, Chuck was already doing a cool experiment controlling runoff water. What we have is we have three control groups to where we had the same composition in each creek bed. So we had uh, rock, sand, and they actually measured it out in volume uh, what, what materials they were going to add to the riverbed. And then the variable group, they were, they were uh, charged the task of stopping erosion. So uh, I showed them some examples that uh, um, scientists are currently using uh, through images that I, I captured on the internet. And they came up with, okay, we're going to put cloth down on top of the soil, use big rocks, or we're going to build a clay wall. And so we're testing which one of these three variables will control erosion the best. Right now, we're doing science. Uh, we're, we're, we have controls. We have variables. We're measuring uh, the data that we collected. We're analyzing the data. And this is doing science. Do you know how it's going to turn out? No. I have no idea. So we'll see. <laughs> Chuck was using a model to explain how water can shape Indiana. A model is used in science to explain something that is not easy to reproduce. A big part of teaching science correctly is not giving the answers to your students. Better yet, let them find out and find out what might happen. If you didn't want your pond being filled up with sediments, would you, yeah? Chuck's class found that the clay wall was most effective in stopping erosion. This is science. Try it yourself! Okay, so you saw how that class investigated sediments. And I want to take a look now at how my sand bottle is doing. And if you can see, it's starting to settle down. There's still some time. I'm going to leave that for a couple more hours. You know, time is something that geology does very well and very long. So I'm going to try to do, make one more demonstration. Uh, that has to do with how sediment rocks are formed. And it's kind of interesting. I, th I hope you like it. Let's see. Let's check it out here. So I want to start with this map of Indiana with the old rocks here and the new rocks here. And let's see if I can make this very same model of a map like that. I'm going to start with some sediments that are kind of unusual. I noticed these around Indiana. Maybe you've seen them. Here's my sediments I'm starting with. It's called the bread sediment. Okay? Here's my first layer. All right? On this bread sediment, later comes a new kind of sediment in Indiana. Water moves it down. I call it the... Uh, yellow cheese sediment, <laughs> okay, gets piled up, along comes more bread sediment, settles down, and then we have the sediment, something strange, some really strange fossils, you see the fossils in these sediments here, these fossils form and they form a layer, we get some more silt and gravel, bread sediments. Now, here's my question. What part is older? Up on the top or down on the bottom? Which ones did I put in first? There's a little bit of earthquake right there. The top or the bottom? And I hope you realize that this is new. Down here is old. Oh, another flood. And in comes more strange fossil sediments. Luckily, we have more bread sediments coming. And they keep piling up layer after layer with the old stuff on top. And something weird happened in Indiana. We got this other kind of white sediment, chalky sediments that came in. It was a pretty big flood because here comes some more of it in. Luckily, things settled down with some more sand and gravel. And then we had some really strange sediments coming in. These guys uh, kept on coming and they piled up. Some years they were taller than others, but there was always that old bread sediment coming in. 
Now, so where is the oldest stuff? Up here on the surface or down, down, down deep in the bottom? The old stuff is, of course, down here on this layer. But then something interesting happened in Indiana. There was just the right climate and plants, and we got this very strange forest that grew in Indiana with certain types of trees and giant dragonflies, and it was a big, hot, swampy area. And for a long time, those sediments piled up here on in Indiana and piled up and piled up and piled up until they died and all those plants died in the swamp, kind of like peat moss. And then more of these wonderful, strange, soft bread sediments piled up on top. Now, here's my problem. We don't have millions of years because after millions of years, what happened was these sediments, after time and pressure, they started getting squeezed and squeezed and squeezed down, and the sediments kept getting squeezed with more pressure and more pressure. I don't have a million years, but I do have a few seconds, and I'm going to squeeze it down with giant pressure. And so all of this was squeezed down, and we made these sediments, and look what happened when, when the, the sediment layers turned into sediments. They're all squeezed down. Now, you got to believe me, those sediments are still there. You have to believe me, those sediments are still there. If only we had a drilling company, we could drill down and see if they're still in the same layers. You think they're still in the same layers? They are, and I do have a drilling company. Here's my drilling company. It's called the Straw Drilling Company. I'm going to do a core sample. I'm going to use this straw, see if I can drill down. I'm going to drill down and see what I find. So I'm starting turning my drill, going through one layer, through another layer. It's kind of rocky and bumpy, and I'm going down and down and down until I hit very through the bedrock, and I can't go any further. Twist a little bit and see. Now it's time to pull up my core sample to see what I have in there. And let's see, pull it on up and wow, check it out. Some of the same layers. I see the coal at the top. And I see some of that strange fossil at the bottom. So I don't I can't wait for millions of years for a glacier, a thousand years, so I'm gonna use a model of the glacier my wife's electric knife. It will erode or cut away some of the material. Let's see what it looks like. Here we go. Wow, there's the same layers. Here's my core sample. Let me see if I get down to my core. See where my core sample came from right here? Right there. So. You can see the layers, how they were deposited, more erosion. Here we go. Now these layers, this is like that road cut I was telling you about. If I open this up on one side of the road, you can see on the other side of the road, old at the bottom, new at the top. And across the world, some layers you can find in Indiana, and you can go all the way to England and find other layers just like it. And layers get folded. This is called folding, and sometimes there's actually a... Sometimes they do this, they fault, and they'll break through an earthquake. But right now, I'm hoping that that looks like Indiana. But you know what? It doesn't quite look like Indiana yet. Let's see. I still see my core sample. Indiana looks like this. I'm missing something. Oh, I know. The glaciers actually came through, and let's see if we can get this in the shape of Indiana. All right. There's a little bit of a Ohio River. There's the Ohio River. 
Now I need the Wabash River. Okay, let's turn it around so I can cut this. Here's a... All this got washed down in the Gulf of Mexico. All right, now, hey, that's looking kind of like Indiana. Let's see. The Wabash, the Ohio, the Wabash over here, the Ohio. Oh, you know what? The glaciers did come through, and they cut off the topsoil. And they cut off some of the layers. Does that look like Indiana yet? Well, let's see. It's starting to look a little bit like it. Yeah, there's uh, the glaciers kept coming. Cut through some really old rock until it got way down here. This is some of the oldest rock in the state. And we ended up with something that kind of looks like Indiana with different layers. Looks like we have the coal right here on this side of Indiana. And right now, you know, the only thing that's missing though, Lake Michigan is right up here. I'm gonna have to find a way to put Lake Michigan. Oh, I know, Lake Michigan goes right about, hmm, well, I'm on, you know, forces that shaped Indiana. Gravity, wind, water, ice, and uh, me eating Lake Michigan. <laughs> so. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson on sediment bottles. Um, don't be angry because I ate Indiana. I hope you enjoyed sediment bottles and check it out. Settle down, sediments, settle down.